What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to lesson number five, I believe this is going to be. Uh, as you can see here on the screen, we still have four up from the last lesson, so I'm just going to open up exercise five, we'll close down four, and uh, don't forget, in Python we have to then, or rather in PyCharm, excuse me, I have to then run uh, EX5, or at least get it up into the console so that we're using that, the interpreter to run that code instead of another piece of code. And we like our debugger function, so I'm gonna up in the column here, put my, um, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna mark off so the debugger knows where I want to begin, and we're going to run and debug five. Let's go to console, sweet. So line number one, computer languages equals 256. I do believe there are over 256 computer languages, which might be a little daunting. Um, don't ever get caught up in the what's best for X, Y, and Z, because everything is different. There are certain languages that might be more adapt to different applications, but that's usually not because of the language itself. It's usually because of the available libraries and modules uh, and ease of use and impl implementation for that application. Implementation for that application. Um, we're using Python because it seems it's one of the easiest to learn. It's one of the most adaptable. Uh, it's fun as hell. It's easy to read and it gets easier to write. And then learning any other language after this is a heck of a lot easier. Uh, and the language that we're going to jump to after Python is Go, which is a computer language that was devised and developed by Google. Um, but let's let's get to it. So computer languages equals 256. You can see I use camel case for languages. I could use an underscore and kept it lowercase. I could have kept it all one word, but it would have looked weird. And again, we want our computer code to be readable. You want to be able to write code, come back a year later and go through it and using, which you'll see a lot more of hashtags with the comments, understand what the hell you were attempting to do um, and why you were doing it. So then either yourself or somebody else when they go through the code makes it readable. So we have our variable, computer language is equal to 256. So when I F8 through this, what do you think the debugger is gonna do? It's gonna create a variable computer languages with the value of 256, nothing in our output console as you can see here to the right. Now we have X equals F8, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna create another variable, and X equals there are, and we have an do, do, do. Oh, that was a good point. So I'm gonna move to the right so you can see we have a new variable X, X equals, and then we have the variable x now has there are 250 types of computer languages. It has an output. That 256 you can see from format from yesterday's language. We're formatting with the variable computer languages. So that output is going to be smack into the curly brackets here. And then if somebody's saying, what the hell, this is broken. It didn't print out in the uh, console, nor did it print out in the bottom. Ignore this yet because we haven't done uh, any outputs yet. Uh, that was because we didn't print. We didn't tell Python to print it to the screen yet. We just created the variables, that's all. So we can F8 to the next section. Data equals 32-bit to string data. We now have a variable in the computer memory, data. 32-bit is the a, the input. The Then we have dodo, or doo-doo, whatever you want to do. 64-bit, uh, again, another variable just with input and outputs. Now we have k equals. We're going to create a, that would make one, two, three, four, fifth variable. And we're putting, again, with formatting in place. We're formatting data and doo-doo. And we can come here, we can see it did it, of course, in the memory. Some have 32-bit and others have a 64-bit. Size does matter. And then we're going down to our next function, which is a print function. And now we can see that we actually have output on our screen. We have, there are 256 types of computer languages. So all we did was we printed our variable x, which was up here. And then this again, this, this notation is just to create a new line. This is an escape character N, which tells Python to make a new line. Just so when I do the next one, printing K, it just gave me a new line here. Because uh, I could hit enter all day I want on the left-hand side here on my developer environment. But if I, on the right-hand side, if I try to run it, it won't have space just because I hit enters over there. So you have to actually tell it I, you want a new line. Uh, so now K is just printing out K. We're going to F8 to the next. Printing, I have a, now this right here, I should immediately know, your brain should say we're indexing. Indexing a number one, so that means there's gonna be more than one variable. So when I go over, sure enough, I have data and doo-doo. So this is gonna be index of zero, this will be index of one. So one system, but others have a zero. So you could see, yes, you're gonna say, oh, it's very much like the K, and it is, but now we're actually printing it. So all we printed is, I have a 64-bit system, but others have a 32-bit. Again, just a little formatting fun. And then I already have to date through print data plus doo doo. So you can see 32 bit, 64 bit. There's no space there because it's literally just concatenating two strings, which is 32 bit, 64 bit. If I wanted to go up here and put a space, 
it would then print a space there. If I knew this was going to be the beginning, I would put that a space and then I would have a space on the output. Um, but down here, it won't put those spaces in. It's just using the, the variables that we created. And we're going to F8 once again. 32 bit, 32 bit, 32. I'm not going to read this out. You all know how to read exactly what the hell it says. Why do we have that? Well, data times 10. So just a little string work there, variable work, taking the variable, do it 10 times. There are no spaces. Again, if I wanted spaces, I could have put a space here, and then it would have gave me, given me a space. It would have printed out the string exactly how I do it, because computers do exactly what we tell them to do. Nothing more, nothing less. Running through print, what goes up, but can never come down. Little riddle for y'all, what goes up, never come down. And we're going to print, do you want to hint? And then we're printing just dots, nothing special there. Formatting, we're putting it into double double quotes, could have been single quotes, could have been triple quotes. Does not matter. Times 10, so we get 10 dots. Stepping through again. Part 1, all we're doing now, you notice on the screen nothing happened. I'm f 8 through here, we're debugging through here. We're the computer's telling me I now have a variable part 1 with a capital Y in its place. I have a variable part 2 with a uh, U, I'm sorry, an O in its place, and then a U. Going through, variable letter, variable letter, variable letter, variable letter. And then we're printing, if you look at this print function here, part one plus part two plus part three, plus, and then we're ending it with, this is just space. And when I go through, the answer is your age. That's all it is. So that's the answer if you didn't, if you didn't catch onto that. What goes up but never comes down, our age. Um, and then, of course, I have print part five, six, and seven. And all that did, if you look here, so what is part one, two, three, and four? One, two, three, and four is your. So it printed your, and then we're having a space, and then we're printing age. Now, having this as an open area and saying the end equals the space, it's going to add that next line, part five, six, and seven. Because you may be wondering why this wasn't on a separate line. It would have been if we took in, if we had taken, took in, Jesus Christ, if we had taken that out. So I'm going to play it here. Now you see down the console, your age. But if we just put that back and we run it out, now it's going to actually have them on the same line. So by adding this end equals with, and there's nothing in here. I don't want you to think that it's just not showing it. There's nothing in between these brackets here. And if you get rid of the space, I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, look at that. It put your age together on the same line, but there's no space there. So we say, eh, let's put the space. We want it to make sense because it is an incredibly creative riddle. So that's all you have for today. This was just a piece on strings, on formatting, uh, printing functions again, and just utilizing uh, a different way to add different strings together, utilizing different functions. Play with it, break it, come back. You may be thinking this is getting a little tedious and boring, but all computer syntax is, stick with it. The real fun's about to begin soon.